Hello. Hello. God bless you. God, God bless, bless you. you. God bless you. Welcome to another Bible study yes. here at Greater Bethesda. I'm Pastor Brian King. And I'm Sister Courtney King. My wife of 23 years. Yes. Happy anniversary. Mwah. Happy Thank anniversary. You. We celebrated 23 years last, last Sunday, Sunday. Last July Sunday. 31st. Yes. 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 So praise God. Uh, we thank you for being here with us yes. this evening. Uh, God had God wants to kind of take us back to some fundamentals tonight. Uh, uh, and I'm praying that that we all uh, uh, see ourselves in what's being done and what we talk about on this evening. Amen? Amen, yeah. amen. And so we, again, we're just happy to be with you. Last, last Thursday, we had an engagement, so we had a throwback Thursday. Yes. And we were excited about that. And then I think the Thursday be, um, be before that was our holy convocation. Yes. So we haven't been with you in a while, and so we are so glad to be with you. And I have my phone out, and I need you to make sure you share like yes, I'm sharing. Share. Please make sure you share the Bible study link with your family and friends. We are going to continue our study on the assurances of being a Christian. We've talked about the assurance of victory, the assurance of uh, the word of God, yeah. the assurances uh, of the love, love of God. the assurances of God's strength, strength of God. the assurances of forgiveness, which was mm -hmm. a really powerful one. Mm -hmm. And tonight, Pastor, we will be talking, Pastor's going to lead us in discussion about the assurances of witnessing. Amen. Because while we know that the day and time that we're living in, it is time for us to spread the good news of gospel Jesus Christ. And how can we do that through witnessing? And how can we witness by sharing? <laughs> <laughs> like going there on your you phones go. or on your computers and sharing the link, sharing the platform with your family and friends. God has given us an opportunity through technology. We don't have to go and knock on people's doors all down the block and things of that nature. That's how you want to do it. That's fine. But he has given us the opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ by sharing our links. So please, please do so. Pastor's going to open up in prayer, and then we're going to go right into our Bible study. We're here at home, Greater Bethesda at home, but we in also the storm. in Where's the storm. Going? So hopefully the if electricity if will freeze, stay don't on. Don't go anywhere. If it freezes, right, if it freezes don't go anywhere. Um, but we also have our physical location, which is in Clinton, Maryland, mm -hmm. 6611 Old Alexandria Ferry Road in Clinton, Maryland. And for the month of August, we are having in-person service the first and third Sundays of the month. This coming Sunday is Holy Communion. Holy Communion. So we welcome you to come and join us in person as we commemorate the the uh, burial and the resurrection of our Lord and the death burial and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Pastor, you're going to open up with prayer and then we're going to go right into the assurances of witness. I sure am. Amen. Father God, thank you for another day. A hot day, a rainy day, whatever, yes. no matter what the weather, we thank you for thank another you, day that you have allowed us to see. Yes, Father. Father God, we thank you for another chance to get it right. Yes. And so we ask you right now, God, to search our hearts and search our minds. And if there's anything that's not like you, God, take it out right yes, now. Yes, Father. And make this word come to life. Be rhema in each of our lives that we grow closer to you in these last and evil days. Touch those who don't know you. Yes, Father. Illuminate yourself, God. Incline their hearts towards those who don't know you, those who are on the fence, who don't remember you like they used to. God, give us, re rededicate us in our from our post-pandemic haze. And let this Bible study be the beginning of a closer walk with you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we want to say hello to our GBC family in Georgia. Hey, hey God what's up with you? you? Hey. Put your name in the chat. Let us know who you are. Let us know who's out there studying the word of God with us. Amen. So, Lady King, I, I will ask you the question since you're here. My oh, guinea gracious. Pig. The central question tonight, what is a Christian? If I had to ask you that answer, you would give me that answer. What is a Christian? I believe, um, and this is the first time I've gotten this question, so I'm, I'm, I'm right, answering this. Right, you get to look at the cheat sheet. All right, I'm answering this spontaneous. I believe that a Christian is a person, first of all, who believes in Jesus Christ, who believes in um, the crucifixion, the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and who also believes in the teachings of Jesus Christ, and he or she is willing to share to live the life of those teachings and then to share those teachings with others in hopes to bring them in relationship with jesus christ now, very good courtney <laughs> you know you always got that kid in the class 
who always knows where you're going and jumps out of frame. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's her. Praise God. But I'm ready for you. Uh, uh, when people say I am a Christian, mm -hmm. what are they saying? If you, you realize that, that about 60% of the earth, of the United States rather, 60% of our country consider themselves to be Christians. About 60, 6 out of 10 people, if you ask them, they will say they are Christians. If you look on their Facebook, if you look wherever, they say they are Christians. But what does this mean? Mm -hmm. you know, according to King, you have told us that a Christian is by, almost by this definition a Christian is a person who believes in Jesus Christ and follows his teachings boom that's what a Christian is but this definition is falling way short woefully short because what does it mean to be in Jesus my God. So they believe in Jesus. Yes. A whole lot of people say they know, but do they believe in Jesus? Mm -hmm. And that deals with our faith? Uh, that, now we're getting into this because it's a whole lot to say believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, but because what, there, if you go to, to the, the, the uh, um, census in Rome, right? I haven't had the chance to go yet. But there are those I've, I know who have gone. And in it says very clearly in the Roman census, uh, the empire used to take very copious notes of everybody who lived in the different regions of their empire. And in the Roman census, it, 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 in the lands of Judea, which is the lands where the Jews lived, in the Tetrarch of Herod, which is the region of Herod, in a town called Bethlehem, there was a baby born named Yeshua or, Je or Jesus that was born to Mary and Joseph. That is a fact. So now that you know that, does that make you a Christian? Think about it. If you can read that and believe what you have read, then you know that Jesus walked this earth, the region of Nazareth, but he was born in Bethlehem. The, the Christmas story, we, we understand that, but does acknowledging this fact, according to the definition, a person who believes in Jesus, so somebody who's read that and believes that is now a Christian in accordance to the definition, unless you're talking about what it means to be in Jesus. Because what we have to remember is in those days, just like today, they hungering for the answer. We have so many people today who are who are climbing mountaintops and, and smoking peyote and, and, and doing all kind of crazy things, looking for an answer. Mm -hmm. Huh? And waiting on the answer. People every year that, that go to uh, Area 54, I think it is, in Arizona, and they sit there, or New Mexico rather, and they sit there and they wait for a UFO to return. Because they're waiting for an answer. The same way that they're waiting now, that the world is waiting now, the world was waiting then. The Jews had heard that... that a Messiah, a Savior is going to come and rescue them from Rome. Hmm. And, and so people, there were, while mil thousands of people could read that Roman census and tell you that Mary and Joseph had a baby named Jesus, huh? they knew him, huh? but they could not identify him. Hmm. Uh, to identify means to note the characteristics of. Right. To know means to, to acknowledge the existence of, but to identify is to have the character or to be able to discern the characteristics of. In order to do that, you have to have a relationship. Then you, a whole lot of people can say they know you, but they don't have a relationship. And then they walk in the room and can't pick you out. Ah, my God, hmm. my God. Remember, remember now, real quick, jump ahead. Think about the garden when they came to grab Jesus. That's why Judas had to point him out because they couldn't even figure out who he was. They knew he existed, but they could not identify uh, who he was. And there are many people who are Christians because they know him. They call themselves or identify or, or describe themselves as Christians because they know him, but can they identify, meaning discern the characteristics of who Jesus was? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 it, it it happens to us as we follow him. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there's a story in Matthew, in the 17th chapter of Matthew, where Jesus has, has some followers and he's already taken the fish and loaves of bread and fed 5,000. And y'all know after he did that, he sent the disciples across the Sea of Galilee to the, the east side, Caesar of Philippi side. And he goes over there and, and he stays with them and he takes them up into a high place, the highest point, Mount Tabor, the highest point in Jerusalem. And there, our Lord transfigures himself. Right? And so the disciples were able to see for the first time, they had watched him do all this miraculous stuff, but they watched his very countenance change into a divine personage. Right? And even while they got there, in Matthew 17, 4, uh, what does Peter said, go ahead, read, read that. Matthew 7, chapter 17, verse 4. Then answered Peter and said unto him, and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Okay, so stop right there. So now atop this mountain, they have been walking with Jesus, who they know. They have seen Jesus transfigure into a different personage which they have never seen anybody else do. And here come Peter saying, whoo, that's pretty good. We should build a tabernacle to you and to Moses and to Elijah. Now Moses and Elijah didn't change it to nothing. But, th but they said, it just shows that with his carnal eye, he was still trying to equate what he had seen with other things. But God wasn't going to let him do that. Go ahead, what happens in verse 5? Matthew 17, verse 5, Well, he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. So huge, this is a huge moment. This is my beloved Son, the voice from heaven, from God above, nobody, it was no mistaking whose voice it was. The clouds, oh, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, Hear ye him. From that moment on, God has determined, he has identified Jesus. Right? So the question is no longer, no longer, who is he? Is he about all that? It is our role changes from being a, a person who watches Jesus to somebody who's following Jesus. And then I say to you, Pastor, with that being said, because we know we are speaking on the assurances of um, witnessing, then my wondering is, can people identify Jesus in our life? Uh, see, Those of us who are Christians. I told are, you that little girl was looking. They're absolutely right. Can people identify, do people see Jesus in our lifestyle? Hey, can, amen. He, they should be able hey, to identify. Now, I, I don't, I know, let me speed up, because I, I, I'm yes. bringing this here. Now, now. Once we had this moment on top of my orb, now our role changes from a spectator to a participator. Huh? And, and now we have a job to do. What's that? Go back, go back. Our job, mm -hmm. as is stated in Mark 16, he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. This is the commission that Christ, that God leaves for all of us. So now once we establish who he is, we can identify him and separate him from Elijah and Moses and Joe and Bobby and everybody else. We have a responsibility to go into all the world and to preach the good news to every creature. And he's even told you the result's going to be everybody who believes you shall be saved and those that believeth not shall be damned. So, so those of us who are now in Jesus, mm -hmm. as the definition says, those of us who are now in Jesus, we have a job to do. And that job is called witnessing. Huh? The job we have to do, the responsibility that we have is called witnessing. Now, why would he use the word witnessing? Or why has the, the King James translation of what Jesus actually, the words he used, actually become witnessing? A witness is 
one who can attest to the veracity of an event. Mm -hmm. Witnessing always works in hindsight, not in foresight. Yes. Right? You can't witness about tomorrow. Huh? God don't expect you to witness about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Witnessing about tomorrow is called prophesying, and he has not given everybody that gift, but he has given everybody the assignment. To witness. To witness. Huh? And so... When you are saying that when you a witness in, in a courtroom is somebody who, who has information that will either, you know, confirm or refute what the, what's trying to be established there. And it's about the attest to the veracity of the event. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was there and Courtney robbed the bank. <laughs> Thanks, baby. I seen her. All yes. the examples. <laughs> I seen her. It was her. She had the yellow shirt, the braids, the glasses. I yeah. remember the glasses. And that's why I right. I witnessed that. But when the Bible uses the word witness, in the two the two most common languages in which the Bible is translated from Greek and Hebrew, in Hebrew, the word is Shana. You know, a lot of little Jewish girls named Shana. Hmm. And the word Shana means two times or to repeat. Hmm. Literally, the word in Hebrew witness is to repeat. My. To Shana, right? And... and, and in, in Greek, the word is martus, which means to live again. That's where we get the word martyr from. Hmm. Huh? So, so really, however, if it's the Old Testament, New Testament, the word witnessing is referring to repeating to live again. Repeating to live again, very specifically. So that's why he used witnesses. So that seems pretty easy. We got the job. We got everything. But when, when it comes to being a witness, many people, many of us don't do it for a lot of reasons. Number one <clears throat> is that we don't feel qualified. Yes. Who am I, man, after all I done? Who am I That's, to tell that anybody? That makes you even more qualified. Uh, see, there she goes again. She's absolutely right. But that the, we don't feel that way. Many people think I am not worthy. That's the enemy. To That's witness, uh-huh. And so when we witness of the goodness of Jesus and his finished work towards us, we have to do so in faith. Yes. Faith, which is the centerpiece of the Christian life. Faith. We witness it. We live in faith. We walk by faith. We witness in faith. The just shall live by faith. Second Corinthians 5 and 20 talks about why we're qualified. Read that for me, Lady King. Why we are qualified. Yes, Second Corinthians, I'm sorry, 5 and 20. Now then we are ambassadors mm -hmm. for Christ. Witnesses. Yes, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Because we have been, as Andy Griffith would say, deputized. <laughs> we have been deputized to, to speak the words that bring reconciliation mm -hmm. back unto God. Uh, and it's important to note that when you do this, you're doing this under the authority and with the blessing of God. You're not, you're not witnessing behind God's back. You're witnessing to his glory. My God. Uh, it, it, right. You're not witnessing, it, you're not in a situation that God did not create. God created time and space and so conformed them so this moment would come. So that person receiving or hearing the gospel, this is their moment of decision, and he's using you as the vessel to bring it forward. Yes. Huh? And and so the the in Mark 5 and 19, it's important because when you witness, you gotta know that you witness two ways. And of course, Lady King has already told us about those two ways. One of the ways you witness is by the way you live your life. The deeds that you do. Yes. People should be able to look and see the way you live your life and be able to tell whether you're a Christian or not. Yes. So you are witnessing the yes. to the love. You are repeating or living again the love of God just in the way you treat your neighbors. And the word it says, our people are reading us as epistles. As epistles read of men. Witness. Yes. Our right? lives. The word epistles is a testament. Yes. A testament to his glory. Right? So the way we live is our first witness. 
It is our greatest witness, mm -hmm. right? There are people who you might never speak to that That's you right. are witnessing to. Amen. And we have to remember that. Huh? People live across the street from you. You're witnessing to them. People who work with you, whose cubicles next to yours, you're witnessing to them. Yes. Whether you ever come out and hand them a track or whether they hear you playing Sandy Patty on your radio, <laughs> or whatever it might be, you're witnessing to yes. them. Yes. But sometimes uh, uh, God shows you why that's important. In Mark 5, 19, he had, Jesus had just come from a place called Gadarene and he had just healed a man named Legion of, of the demons that had possessed him and had tore him and threatened to kill him. And he had miraculously restored him back to the place where he could go back in. But look what Jesus told him about his witness. Mm -hmm. Mark 5 and 19 says, how be it Jesus suffered him not. He was at Jesus' feet as you would be too. Jesus, take me with you. Oh God, you've, you've done so much. You're so powerful. You're so awesome. Please, I just want to be where you are. Take me with you. And Jesus says, no. Mm -mm. Go home to thy friends. friends. And tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. And I wonder, Pastor, you know, we are, like you said, a lot of times why we don't choose to witness. We'll tell friends about um, different things. TV what happened, shows. What happened on a TV show. What happened <laughs> to I was, at the I was driving an accident on the, on the highway right. and all these different things, but like how Christ told this how Christ told this person, no, I'm not taking you with me. I need you to go and tell of the goodness, tell of what I have done for you. Tell your friends, let people know. Because, Lady King, we're not spectators anymore. But he, what Legion wanted to do, even after he'd been miraculously healed, he wanted to go and see some more. Let me go with you that I might spectate what you'll do next. Mm. But he said, no, no, you're no longer a spectator. Ah. Now you are a witness. My God. Oh, my. So what <laughs> you are saying, a participant. Pastor, many of us as Christians have become spectators. Absolutely. Absolutely. And receivers. And, and, and especially many of us now in this in this new era of, of virtual Mm -hmm. uh, services. It's easy to sit back in your house and be a spectator my now. God, Easier us, now than ever. I'm sitting in my house. We all sit in our houses and, and we sit there and we think that we're okay because we're being ministered unto. But what are we giving out? My but God said, nah, -uh. like he told Legion, the time is over for spectating. Now it's time to be, amen, a witness. Uh, All right, that's powerful, Pastor. I got to put that in our chat, Pastor. In order to fulfill the mission that God has given us to witness, see, the, one of the main reasons why we don't uh, 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 feel comfortable or, or don't step out and speak on the goodness of God and the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ is because, as I said, we don't feel worthy because hmm. we don't know who we are. But in his word, he tells us right who we are and why you have the qualification to witness. Yes. It's the devil who tries to make That's us feel right. like we're not worthy to witness. That's right. Uh, oh, no, nah, you don't have a degree in theology, so you can't witness. Mm -hmm. You haven't been saved for 400 years, so you can't witness. You don't have a collar around your neck or a title on your door or whatever it is so that you can't witness. But John 1 and 12, read that for me, Lady King. What, but John, as many as, I'm sorry, oh, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his so name. So if I believe on his name, mm, 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 mm. I have the power, power. Yes. of a son of God. The same way he said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. He's saying that to Brian. He's saying that to you. He's saying that to you out there. He's saying that it. To as many as receive him, right. they receive the same power that was imbued upon Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. And, and, and one thing, when you talked about that past, when you said it's many of them that receive them, sometimes what discourages us from that witnessing is that we, people who don't receive the word. Right. And something I remember years ago, Superintendent Gray, Pastor Gray, mm -hmm. when we were at our former church, our, um, our church, our home church, if you will, he, well, he one time said during his teaching, he said, it's not our responsibility as of whether they receive it. Mm -hmm. It's our responsibility to share it. Now they have to be accountable. 
right? They have to be accountable if they don't receive it. But don't be, because I'm saying that to someone, don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, sometimes when people don't receive it, I don't believe that. That's that's this person's religion. Oh, you believe all that? And we become discouraged and don't say anything to anyone else. Mm -hmm. But God is going to direct you to Ah. a person who will receive it. So we are encouraging you when you're going out to witness. No, everyone is not going to receive it. But that doesn't mean we don't stop sharing. Uh, Keep sharing. And then also, because we know sometimes you are planting the seed even in the person who doesn't one receive plants, you. One water, right, and right God there. And there. Will increase. So you, you plant that seed. God will lead you to that person. And sometimes the outcome may be different than what you say. They may close, close the door in your face. They may say, I'm not listening to that link. Stop sending me a link. But you don't know. Something may happen later on in their life. They're like, you know what? Let me turn on that link that they uh, shared with me. Lady King, tell them to get their pride out the way. That's right. Get your pride out the way. And, and I'll tell you why it's your pride. Because it's all of our pride, yes. mine too. That's right. It's our pride because we don't witness it because we fear rejection. Yes. We fear they're going to slam the door on our face. right? And so we fear that they're not going to receive us. But when you recognize that I'm not speaking for me. That's right, Pastor. You're not slamming the door in my face. <laughs> I know, that's right. Huh? You, right. You're closing your door on an opportunity on the because, gosh. see, the reason that we, we fear having the door closed in our face and being rejected of men is because when they receive it, we think they're receiving us. Uh, mm, but they right. not receive, even when they say, even if they go, come to the Lord right at that moment, they're not coming to Brian. It's, it's not our doing. It's not our, it's no, no goodness of mine own. But that's got to be the attitude. Yes. Uh, okay, keep going. I, I, ah, I, that's, that's gotta, powerful, keep, though, Pastor. Right? You see that's what I'm powerful. saying? So, so, so Satan wants us to stop spreading the gospel of Christ. And his main weapon Mm -hmm. is to remind us of how bad we are. (laughs) Yes. That's so every time you can't go out there and talk to them, you used to do the same thing. You can't go out there and do that. That that you've been down this street your own self. Mm -hmm. You've done this and done that. And Satan will all will try to remind you and bring these things into your remembrance so that you will stifle the witness, My God. the repeating and reliving of the goodness of God. But it's important to note Romans 5 and 1 yes. reminds us of our, for anybody who's questioning oh, I their love this. I love this, I love this, I love Tell this. Them. Romans 5 and 1, therefore being justified uh-huh. by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wait, Amen, now, Pastor. Now, I told you all, if you're going to operate effectively in witness, that you have to do so in faith. Yes. You have to operate in faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Not just because we believe and have faith he's going to protect us while we're out on the street, but by because faith in him justifies my, us. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't matter what I have done not because I'm justified by my faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. And because of my faith in Christ, I have peace with the mm, father. Mm, 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 mm. Me and God, we're cool. <laughs> yes. Right, right. I don't know what you think about me, but he says I'm okay. And so because he's given me the assignment, he has deputized me, that's why I'm here to tell you that he's good. Yes. That's why I can say, am I worthy to say? No. Nope. But the, I, the, my permission is granted because I'm justified by faith. So that's how so that's how we're qualified to witness. So anytime when when Satan tries to bring these things to your remembrance, remember Romans five and one. And, and when you said that, Pastor, I'm looking at the scripture. It says, "Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace." Uh huh. So when Satan comes and try to play off our mind, what you mean you going to witness? You know what you just did right, an hour right, ago, right. not even a what year you ago. Mean, not what you, you mean you going to go? But you know what? You allow that word, that word of Romans. Five one bring peace. Satan, Satan, loose here. Right. Get away from me. Right. You're not gonna bring chaos up in here. Yeah. I have peace, peace and understanding that I am justified by, by faith. faith. Absolutely. Not that, of my own doing, <laughs> but with God through Christ the, Jesus. The, and now we have you're to witnessing. That. Yes. Now you're witnessing. So how do I witness? When I now that I recognize who I am and that I'm justified by faith, Amen, brother Deacon. Amen. How do I witness? First Peter 3 and 15. Yes. Uh, 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 Paul admonishes, or Peter admonishes. He says, 
but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts yes. and be ready always, always to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. My God. In other words, keep your heart sanctified so when the world, because the world is hungry, the world is desperate, the world is searching, when they come to you and ask you, why aren't you acting like the rest of the world? <laughs> yes. We all got the same pink slip. Why are you responding differently? We all have, after all you've been through, seem like you should be acting dot, dot, dot. And when the world comes to you, First Peter 5, 3 says you got to be ready, huh? always ready to give an answer for the hope that you have. And Pastor, can I say something? Uh, and when they ask you, say it's Jesus, the Jesus in me. We, we have to. That's the meekness and fear part. Right. And, and, and because, and the reason why I said that, don't say because I'm spiritual. Right. Because I'm cogent. Oh, I'm oh. cogent. You know, oh, I go to church on Sundays. We have to start speaking his name. Ah. There's power Miracles in his name. on your tongue we Mir talked about yes. in prayer. Amen. And Amen. so, so begin saying, it's, the, it's Christ that lives in me. And we are not ashamed to receive him. We're not ashamed to receive the benefits of him. We shouldn't be ashamed to speak uh, his name. And we have to start, everybody else say everybody else's name out in this world. We need, when the army, what's different about you, Jesus Christ, who lives in me? And tell him. Now, tell now, him. now, because when you witness, it, it, it's got to, uh, I've asked people, you know, or people have come to me too, we've had conversations, and they say, I, I want to go out there, but I don't know how to witness. I don't know what to say. What should I say? And I say, what did they say to you? All of us are here because somebody witnessed to us. Amen. Either through deed or through word. Everybody who is saved is saved because somebody lived the gospel or preached the gospel to them. Yes. But when you go out and witness, let Pastor Kate give you a little, little uh, instruction, a little tidbit that I've learned. You tell me. Witnessing div divides into two parts. When you talk to somebody, you give them the situation and the solution. The problem, one of the problems is that we give them the situation and don't give them the solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or we give them the solution and don't give them the situation. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, if you want them to get the totality of the gospel, you have to give them the situation. And the solution while you're standing right there and you can do so it just right in the word of God you don't have to make up no situation you don't have to make up no solution mm -hmm. it says right there uh, 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 the reality of our situation is that we live in a world of sin hmm? and that the situation this reality in Romans 3 and 23 is one that we all know for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We stop there. You sit on the corner. You need to get your life right. <laughs> For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that's true. That's the situation. But I'll give you a little news flash. Sinners know they're sinners. They know that they're, they know that they're not doing what God has called them to do. Yes. So that the, many, while you were restating the reality, many of them know that. Our initial state is sin. And you have to tell them, because some people are okay in their sin. <laughs> some people are cool with, yeah, I'm a sinner, cool. Yeah. Uh, but but they, they, make, they write up songs about how fun it's going to be in hell. Me and my friends are going to have quite a party in hell. I don't know who told you that. Because... Part of that reality that we're all born into sin also can be found in Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of this sin is death. Mm -hmm. Solution though. But the gift of God is eternal life yes. through Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. The, yes, you, the, the situation is you're a sinner. Yes, the situation is you were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And that the wages of the sin in which you were born are is death. But yes. here come the solution. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank but you, the Lord. gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Huh? You got to tell them that. Don't leave, don't leave them right. right there. Don't let them walk away without 6 and 23. Amen. You give them 3 and 23, 
And you have to make sure you give it to them. Don't just give them six. And don't just give them three. But you got to give them three and 23 and six and 23. Because so many Christians, we, we just come across the world we, as people standing on the street corners preaching about doomsday. That's because we give them one or the other mm-hmm. and not both. We give them Romans 3.23, the wages of sin, without giving them the gift of God in Romans 6.23. Amen. And so we need to show them the love of God. Love I, I'm, of I'm God. telling you, for such a great love wherewith he has loved us. We're here because he loved us, yes, not because amen. Uh, uh, not not because we were so good, or not because doing. somebody scared us with right? right. We're here because he loved us, and the the love is the solution. God's love is the solution. Yes, right. It's the solution for their their uh, uh, depression. It's the solution for their suicidal tendencies. It's the solution for their abuse. It's a solution for their, their, uh, wayward thinking. It's a solution for their confusion and their insomnia. It's a solution for all of these things. And he gave it to us from the beginning of the world. Oh God. Romans five and eight. Read that. Read that. Romans five and eight, but God commanded his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So yes, yes, the situation. Yes, you're a sinner. And yes, the wages of sin is death, but know that while you were sinning. My God, thank you, Lord. Christ died for us. He commended his love towards you while you were still sinning. You got to be sure to tell him that. While you're messing up, while you're doing whatever it is you're doing, while you can't help your can't help it, he died for you. Yes. Huh? And, And... Another major thing that we fall short of with witnessing is we tell them, I don't know enough scriptures. I don't I don't know the Bible good enough to go out there and tell. Well, then find the scriptures that you know. I, I love uh, uh, the famous uh, martial artist Bruce Lee. And, and a whole lot of people think you have to know all 66 books of the Bible. But Bruce Lee said it this way. Bruce Lee said he did not fear the man who knew 10,000 kicks. Or who could kick 10,000 t- different kicks. But he feared the man who knew one kick 10,000 times. Uh, not guys who knew 10,000 kicks one time but the man who knows one kick 10,000 times. You might know one verse. That's right. One of these verses in here, you might memorize one verse. If that's what you know, then you stick to what you know. That's right. Huh? And the Lord will anoint and and, and bring increase. Huh? Stick to, you don't have to, to know every every Greek and, and Hebrew. Thank you, Pastor, yes. Huh? <laughs> that's, not, that's not necessary. But you, the one kick you got, yes. you know that verse. And we don't go ahead, because 1 Corinthians 15, he says, For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I know, which I have received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Not according to my opinion. I told you I'm repeating. I'm witnessing. That he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The scriptures. Yes. Huh? When you go out there, give them the word of God. My God. Uh, too many of us go out there armed with a little bit of God and a whole lot of our opinion. Mm. Praise God for your for your knowledge, but people don't care about your opinion. Your opinion can't save nobody. I know my I got a lot of opinions, and not <laughs> none of them can save anybody. I can tell you what's right and what's wrong and, and, and tell you what article I got it from. But that's not going to save anybody. That's, right. that's arguing. That's not witnessing. We're not supposed to be contentious that's right. in our witnessing. And make no mistake, the world is at enmity with the word of God. Huh? It, it ain't you. It's the God in you. It's the fact that you're speaking the word out of your mouth, the word that brings life. That's what the devil's after. He's not after you. If you're not speaking a word, he's going to let you go. And so what the devil tries to do is he tries to intimidate the word by stifling the messenger. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
If he can't stop the power when the word goes out, then he has to try to stop the word from going out. So he, mm-hmm. so he can't stop the, the, the power of the message, so then he'll try to stop the ability of the messenger. That's exactly right. And that is the challenge, amen, of witnessing. My God. Because when he can't stop the message, he tries to stop the messenger. And that's when, going back to faith, that's when, when the devil tries to come against you, and stifle you as the messenger, that is when your personal relationship with Jesus Christ becomes the main thing. Yes. Your personal relationship. I cannot come and witness what Lady King said. I cannot come and I can't witness what, what my grandmama and them saw or, or what, what my, my pastor saw or my friend, my bishop saw. What, I can't talk about what somebody else saw. I, can, I must have a relationship based upon faith in Jesus Christ. That's why I'm out here, and that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about what building you walk in. I'm not talking about, uh, uh, we got to stop trying to recruit people to our church and bring them to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that relationship, what he did for me. Huh? And that might be the time when you tell them your testimony. Yes. A whole lot of people don't like to testify because maybe we don't look as good or would surprise you or we think people are going to think differently of us. But Romans 1 and 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. My God. Mm. I'm not ashamed to tell you what he did for me. Yes. I'm not ashamed to testify because it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, whether they be Jew first, but also to the Greeks, huh? to the anointed, to the chosen peoples, but also to everybody. Huh? I'm not, I'm so grateful oh God, thank you, Lord. that he brought me this far. I'm so grateful that he turned me around. Yes. Are you grateful? My God. If, uh, are you, if you're truly grateful, then witnessing gets a little easier. Huh? And that's just like sometimes when we buy something really nice for someone, you know, and, and you with that person, they with a crowd, tell them what I got you. Tell them about that, <laughs> tell them about that gift I got you. You want right. them to share. Right. So, so that's what God said. Tell them about the gift I gave you, my son Jesus Christ. All of the, think about how excited <laughs> our people get when, when the miraculous is done in their lives, when salvation is brought into their lives. The woman at the well said, come see a man. Yes. Come, y'all come here. See a man who told me everything I'd ever done. Some of it wasn't good. Right. Think about it. She wasn't saying who gave the highlights of my life. Mm-hmm. She said, come and see a man who told me everything, amen, that I had ever done. Legion said, oh, come and see. Oh, hold on. I was crazy and I was curtain myself and I was on my way to destroying myself. Somebody out there can identify. They're on their way to destroying themselves, but God stopped them. My God, my God. Huh. And the rest of my life, I wanted to sit, sit at his feet. If he would have let me, I'd have sat at his feet forever. But he told me to come and tell you. So I, out of obedience, I'm coming to tell you. Huh. My hey, God, when my no God. man could tame me, <laughs> when not, I couldn't kill nothing and wouldn't nothing die. In my life, couldn't nothing go right. I was addicted and couldn't get out. I was lunatic. Yeah, I'm talking about Legion now. Huh? That's what Jesus had sent him back to do. That's what Jesus sent Brian to do. And I believe that's what Jesus is sending a lot of you all to do. All of us to do. Not a lot. All of us. Because things happen when you stand up for God. Yes. When you witness boldly and effectiveness comes through. There's a story that I love so much. Acts 4. If you get an opportunity... Peter and John were witnessing and, and the power of God was upon them because of their faith. And they healed leperers and blind persons and they were called to the car because for some reason the world don't like it when God blesses people. So they call Peter and John, they call them to Jerusalem, the leaders, and sit them down in the middle of of the, of the square there. And they began to preach boldly. They began to speak, and everybody's looking at them. Now, Peter's a fisherman. That's not an educated position. 
tent makers and all these other jobs that, that don't, don't require necessarily all that training. How are these people who are simple men? How do they expound on the gospel with eloquence, with power, and with my might? My God, my God. Go, Acts, the fourth chapter. Now, I want everybody to make sure you read this. Acts, the fourth chapter, starting at verse 7. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? These miracles that have begun, right? Now, that's the time to be scared. You're surrounded by the police and the, and the lawmakers, and they already don't like you too much. Then Peter, make, can I see that? Read that, Lady King. Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Wait, wait, wait. Then Peter of his own mind. No, no, no. 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 Then Peter of his own might and no, of his own accord. No. Then Peter with the words he had practiced. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, no. Said then Peter with the Holy Ghost. Yes. You got to have the, the Holy, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, amen. If we're going to witness effectively, we have to do so with the endowment of the Holy Ghost upon us. With the Holy Ghost, he said to the ye, ye rulers and people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means is he made whole? Since y'all brought me here to talk about how, how powerful that is, who you think did it? This is a time to be careful because this is a time when many people want to take the credit for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, at this time, some people would take a bow. Yes, yes. For, this, for, and for twenty nine ninety nine, I can do it for you too. Mm -hmm. uh, but he said, if you examine that good deed, what we did, ask yourself by who made him whole. And then he says in verse 10, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name oh of Jesus God. Christ. Speak his name. <laughs> speak his name. Come on, somebody. See if I had the organ. <laughs> by the name of <laughs> Jesus. Right. <laughs> Whom ye crucified. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Shh. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. You're not supposed to add that part because when we sin, we crucify him afresh. You're not supposed to. You might make somebody feel bad if you tell them that their behavior has crucified. But Peter boldly said, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you all. My God, my God. That's the gospel right there, by the way. And this is the stone which was set at naught of you, the builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation, because now he's attacking religion. He's getting them. First he told you where it came from. Huh? First he told you in, in whose authority he's operating. Yes. He told you, the, you've seen the miraculous, but now he's giving you the background. Huh? And, and glory, the situation. Neither is there salvation, verse 12, in any other. For there is none I other mean, name I under know. heaven. Given among men, whereby we must be saved. Come on, Peter. Uh, he's preaching right now. He's standing in the middle of enemies, preaching boldly. I, is Peter scared? I don't know. If he might be scared, but if you got the Holy Ghost, he has a way of doing something to your scared, yes. your fears. Uh, so he, he, Peter, his stuttering Peter and his, his a, 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 antagonistic Peter, but this don't sound like him. This sounds like the Holy Ghost talking That's right. as he's standing there. And you know, because they knew Peter, but they never heard Peter sound like this. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter, verse 13, and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. They marveled. And they took knowledge of them. That they had begin, yeah. been with Jesus. My God. People will notice you. Yes, when you've uh, been with Jesus. When you speak, when you testify and, and witness of the goodness of Jesus and the power of Jesus, people will notice you. Yes. People will look past what you used to do. Look past your past. Huh? Jesus will orchestrate your future so much that people will look past your past. Hmm. And... and, and Beholding the man which was healed. now So now I, I'm hearing Peter. I'm seeing what you did. And I'm hearing what you said. And it's all starting to come together now. I'm, I'm hearing so many times we see what is done, but we don't hear nothing else. 
or we hear people, we hear something, but we don't see nothing else. But, he, but Peter gave them an example. He said, here, you can see something, and now you're going to hear something. And beholding, verse 14, the man which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he yeah he is. Yeah. He's a healer. Yep, because <laughs> Jeff is healed. Yep. He's a deliverer. Yep, because Legion is, is delivered. Yeah, because Brian, yeah, he don't curse you out no more. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your, have you all had any, an experience? Yes. Can the world look at you and say, yeah, yeah. There's a change. Yeah, he is. Huh? I told you we have to live this life. Uh, our greatest testimony will be the life that we lead. Amen. Not just the word. And the assurance is that if we assure, have faith in God, that our testimony will be effective. It might not be visible, but it will be effective. It might not be immediate, but it will be effective. What shall I, now, now, when they commanded him to go aside out of the council, they talked to themselves. Now they kicked Peter and John out because they couldn't do nothing with him. They didn't want to eat lunch with them. Sometimes when you think you're by yourself, you're being put set to the side because they don't know what to do with the God in you. Yes. Your testimony is so great. Your witnessing is so effective that the devil doesn't know what to do, so he has to take a time out. And that's what they did, verse 16, saying, what shall we do with these men for that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. My God. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them. Threaten them. Now you wonder why you wonder why it seems like the devil comes so hard against your your attitude when it's time to to witness that they speak hit, we're gonna threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this His name, name. Mm, trying to shut them up. Uh, there you go. That's what the devil want to do is shut us up. Uh, there you go. Right. See, I, that's why I love the word of God. You read it and then you let it talk for itself. Uh, and they called them. And commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name of Jesus. Now, if the police knocked on your door and said, don't say Jesus' name anymore, or we're going to carry you to the jail, would you be quiet? You do know that there are still nations in this world right now where it is illegal to call on the name of Jesus. To do, If you live there, could you still call on the name of Jesus? Would you still be faithful in your witness if your witness was not popular? We don't do it because we're afraid a door will get slammed in our face. But what if a jail cell door is <laughs> right in your face? Yes. What if charges, what if you lose your job, and what if your, your family oh faces tor torture? Would you still do it? But Peter and John, verse 19, Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. He didn't come out and say, no, we're not going to do it. He, they said, God gave them wisdom. Mm -hmm. So he asked them, is it better for us to listen to what God says or what you say? The devil doesn't like it when you place the truth right in front of him. And, and, and so... For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and have heard. All we can do is retell twice, Shana, the things that have been seen and have been heard. I saw him multiply fish and loaves my of bread. My God, my God. <laughs> I, I, I heard him say Lazarus arise. I, I saw him go to the pool of Bethesda and I, I, I saw when he went up to the man and I saw, heard him say, wilt thou be made whole, take up thy bed. I, I, I watched all that and I heard all that. And so I got no choice for the rest of my life but to share, to repeat, to witness. And God's assurance is if you have the faith enough to witness to it, he has the power to continue to do it. My God. If you'll keep talking about it, he'll keep doing it. Amen. And his blessings are all over the place because you got to keep going. Huh?
pouring out blessings. Uh, I'll stop right there. Oh, that's, that's powerful, Pastor. Yeah. And I was just thinking about when you talk about keep talking and keep sharing it. I was speaking to someone yesterday and we were talking about the, the power of deliverance and mm -hmm. how people need deliverance. And I shared with my forgot who we heard it said some people want relief, but they don't that, want deliverance. That was uh, uh, Pastor Locke. No, no, no. Yeah, uh -huh, it was. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. McCullough. I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. That's Bishop, uh -huh, Bishop, Bishop McCullough. Bishop McCullough. Bishop McCullough. Bishop McCullough said that. Said that people want relief and not deliverance. And so we have to keep sharing our story, keep sharing our testimony, keep sharing the word of God because that can help them get delivered. Not just relief. They might not always get, feel good. They may not always when Peter was good, preaching, they didn't feel delivered. good in Jerusalem. Huh? Because he said, you crucified Jesus. And it's not our doing. Remember, Peter said, the word said Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, and the assurance is, as long as the Holy Ghost go with me, I'm going to be all right. There's nothing that man can do with me, to me, against me, if the Holy Ghost abides inside of me. So the assurance of our witnessing is that if you can keep speaking it, he can keep doing it. Amen. And that the Holy Ghost will go with you. Faith, the lifestyle of faith. Huh? Faith in, in the finished work of God. Faith in his provision. Faith in his protection. Faith, living in faith, is the greatest witness. My God. The most powerful witness that any of us can have. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank God. Can we thank God for the word? And we thank God for the Bible study on tonight, Pastor, talking about the insurances of witness. We have a responsibility. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We have a responsibility. It's Jesus not a said, suggestion. It's not a suggestion. It's a we responsibility. have a responsibility. Jesus, as you said, he said to these, no, no, you didn't go off me. I need you to go and tell somebody. Right, right, exactly. I need you to go. We have an assignment to go and tell. Just a couple of Sundays ago, we had a go service. Uh -huh, get out. Uh -huh. Get out. G O get out. It's time for us to spread the good news. And if you love, you can go to our YouTube channel. Last Sunday, we um, were able to share that service from a couple mm -hmm. of Sundays ago. And it's a powerful, powerful message that we have a responsibility to go out. Yes, it's awesome to receive the blessings of the Lord. Yes, it's awesome to have a relationship with Him. But just like how we have expectations of God, He has expectations of us, and that is to go out and spread the love and the word of Jesus no Christ. more spectating no more I like time that, to get Pastor. off the no. bench no more I like coach I didn't give you this uniform to sit here and look at That's me right. it's time for us to get in the game Jesus expects us he didn't bless you he didn't save you for you to sit and be My saved God. <laughs> he didn't deliver you for you to sit and be delivered he delivered you so that you would be free to go because we're saved to serve amen we're saved to serve. With that Amen. said, we thank you here at Greater Bethesda yes. to come for joining us here at Greater where you can witness love lived and we are saved to serve. Amen, 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 amen. And so again, you see on the uh, on the screen. If you desire prayer, if you desire prayer, you can always email email us at greaterbethesda15 at gmail. Please do so. We will reach out with you every Wednesday at seven thirty. We have prayer every Wednesday night at seven thirty. We have prayer. I'm going to show our prayer slide that's there, right there, right there. Every Wednesday at seven thirty p.m. Call us. It's a conference yes. call. So Join with us. You don't have to us. worry about driving somewhere. You don't have to worry about putting on your computer. Just get right on your phone, on your device, and call in at 7.30 on Wednesdays. But if you need a prayer before Wednesday, email us yes. at greaterbethesda15 at gmail. And so we can pray with you and for you because there is power in prayer. Amen. 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 There Amen. is power in prayer. So please let us know. And also, as always, as always, we welcome you to give. Yes. We welcome yes. you to give. If you would like to be a blessing to Greater Bethesda, please do so. The various ways to give are on the screen. And know that your seed, and as Pastor said, with your seed, Put, put an assignment on that seed. Amen. Is that what you say, Pastor? Amen. Notice giving is about faith. Yes. The same faith that empowers us to witness empowers us to give. The same demonstration that allows us to speak what God has done to the, to the sinner, our giving demonstrates our knowledge of what God has done 
in our own lives. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so what you what you have, please know it goes right towards our inreach and our outreach ministry. And we thank God. Anything else we need to share before we go on, on Sundays? On Sundays we have our uh, Hour of power. So just Amen. in case you can't make it to our 10 o'clock service, either virtual or in person, come join Pastor King for an hour of power. Just an hour. On our Zoom. Just an hour. Eight minutes. Yeah. <laughs> on our Zoom. I tell you, it gets really good. Sometimes <laughs> you get past the hour and I say, Pastor, it's time for service. Amen. <laughs> but come on and join in uh, with Pastor for our hour of power. And this Sunday is our first Sunday. So we'll have communion. We'll have Amen. communion not only in person, but also on Zoom. So you you are welcome to come and join us in person or on Zoom for communion this coming Sunday. Amen. So again, we just thank God for you. We love you so much. We see so many of our GBC members. God bless you, who are Sister on. Keisha. God yes, bless Sister you. Keisha, God bless uh, Deacon you. Deacon Cummings, yes, God bless yes, your heart. Yes, yes, Deacon Cummings and all who are there. So Pastor's going to pray us out. And again, if you need prayer, please make sure you send us a message. Email us. So we, there is power in yes. prayer. And we have some awesome prayer warriors who are there. We don't have, you don't have to share all your business. We only we God knows. Yes. And what you need is I need someone to help stand in the gap for me and intercede on my behalf. And guess what? You'll get that right here, Greater Bethesda, because you will witness love, love lived. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hey, Father God, we thank you for yes, Jesus. another opportunity. God, let this word rest upon us. Yes. Let us see ourselves. Where we can, where we can go, and what we can do, to witness, to retell of your goodness, and tell of your mercy. So give us the boldness. Yes. Let your Holy Spirit abide with us, in us, and work through us, that you get all of the glory, and we get the victory. To so everyone under the sound of my voice, Thank now, you, Lord. now be glory and honor, majesty and power, now and forever. Amen. 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 And we're going to leave this running for a while. If you would like to become a member, Greater Bethesda, yes. you don't have to be right here in the DMV area. We have members in Minnesota, in Ohio, in Tennessee, in Georgia, in um, extended Maryland areas, and in Maryland and Virginia. <laughs> and so you would like, you need a church home. Pastor talked about witnessing, talked about having that covering. Come on, the Greater We'd Bethesda. We'd love to have you. Come on. We'd love to have Good you. Morning. So that same email address that you see scrolling on the screen, <coughs> I'm sorry, please email us and let us know you would like to become a member so you too can help us witness and spread the love, love of love. Jesus Christ. Because at Greater Bethesda, you will witness love, love lived. God, God bless, bless you. you. God bless you.